All right, guys, welcome back. We're at the end of this playlist here. So we're at lab six. We just came from lab five. And then here's what we did in lab five. We created our custom APIs. And then we explored the uh, open API view uh, or Swagger docs. And now we are moving into security. So if you remember, I think it was like lab four, also lab five, we intentionally made it so really anybody, if they had this guy here, anybody could access it. So like if I knew... If I guess if I knew it, it even existed. And again, because we're in Safari, I need to go here so you can have a better a look at what this is. Anybody can access this, but we don't want that. So let's go ahead and walk you through how to do this. I would say just try and take everything in because there's a lot of new terminology if you're just new to this here. We're going to the security tab here, which if you're in the REST workshop, so again, uh, we'll just like reset. So we're at the launch pad, a few different ways you can go here. It's probably going to be in your recently visited down here. We can click on development and go to the rest tab. We can also go to our little hamburger menu item here and click on rest. I'll just do that. And then we are working with this module. You don't even have to click the module. You can just go to security here, but just so you know, what, you know, just to have it in the context is helpful. So we're going to start off with roles and we are going to create a role. Now we're doing this because this is going to be at some point associated with this resource module that we just created. And I want to make sure that I don't have one in here already. So it doesn't look like I have that guy, right? So that's our role. So we're here. We just created this role. Now we're going to go to privileges and click on privileges. You can see I already have all the privileges for like auto rest. This is one that's automatically provisioned for users or it's automatically does that. And so is this one here. Now for privileges, we have some information that we need to put in. So we've got like labels and names and descriptions. So we'll go over here, we'll create a privilege and we'll give it this label here. And then the name is going to be this like dot notation. I'm just copying and pasting from the lab. You can change it to whatever you want. You can change any of this type of, you just have to remember it. It's probably easier if you just copy this stuff because it just gets difficult to remember this stuff. The comments are not required, but the description is required here. We're not going to click create yet because, well, we say this in the lab, we need to go to roles and we're associating the, the role with the privilege. It's gonna be for this, this guy here. So highlight it, so it's in the available roles column. Uh, and we're gonna move it to the selected roles column. So highlight it and then click the single arrow to bring it over to the selected roles column. Now we have this role and privilege associated with each other. So like these all kind of work hand in hand, right? They're kind of like interconnected. The next piece is the module, the, the, the thing that we are going to protect. So check this out. So if I click create and I go back to overview, so I have my role, my new role that I just created, which is right here in row seven. And then I've got my privilege which is this guy here. So that's what we just did, but check this out. So if I go to modules and then I go to edit, you can see how it's automatically protected by this privilege now, which is kind of neat. So now we're going to create a quote unquote user that can access this. So that's what we're doing here with this create OAuth2 client. So we're going to go to OAuth clients. We're gonna create a client. So we're just naming this pretty literally. So this is OAuth client, and then our description is security on my REST service. I'll do chris at test.com and then support URI. Uh, I don't have one because if nothing is real, I'll do my blog. <laughs> All right, and next we have these three code flow types, client credential, authorization code, and then implicit, but we're doing client credential there. Uh, it's in our documentation for the reasons why you might want to use one over the other, but for the purposes of lab, we're just using the uh, client credential. So now we're creating this client, which is not necessarily like a user, but this client will want to access things. So we need to give it roles and privileges. So the, the role that we just created, will move over into the selected roles, and then we'll move over to privileges. We're moving this privilege over here and then we will click create. And so what we've just done is we've said this role and this privilege, uh, which is associated, so go over to privilege, which the, this privilege protects this module. That's why you need to add that privilege in there for this guy. Now with uh, how OAuth 2 works, since we have the requisite privileges, this client, which is like a, a user application, which will have this client ID and client secret will authenticate with this server. And then this server will issue the client access token or bearer token to do what it needs to do to interact with the ORDS REST APIs. Uh, how do we do that? So we go over here and we're saying 
get bearer token. This is actually the URL that you would use like in your application to say, go here and tell this server that I am this user, this is my client ID, and this is my client secret, and that I want to authenticate with and be authorized to uh, access these resources. So I will do bash, copy, and then I think here what we're saying, we want biz logic. So again, we're gonna go back to our text editor here, and we're gonna save this temporarily, uh, and you'll see how this works. So we need to use this first in order to get an access token. And then that with that access token, then, then we can actually get the resources that we need. Okay, next piece is, let's go back to the REST modules, and we are working with the biz logic. This is just what the lab says. Again, we're working with this one here. I wanna get this curl command, and I can go ahead and add in like, whatever, I'll add in like A3. And that's just makes it easier for you to copy and paste. But I'll go ahead and copy that, and then I'll bring this over here, so that's ready. You can remove this part here and the and the comma so you can just do that it's just a lot cleaner to do that all right so now we've got like a multi-step process here so that's now we're like level set right this is where we are so the idea here what we're saying in the lab is okay if you were to I gotta log back in go to your cloud shell if you were to take this curl command just like we did in the in the beginning copy it um, let me make sure this is the just basic text so if you were to copy this bring this guy over here and attempt to pass this as a post request, it's gonna say unauthorized. It's unauthorized because this this resource is locked down now. It's locked down by, um, it's locked down by, um, well, actually a better way would be to just go to the module. If I go to edit, it is locked down by this privilege. If I lack the privileges to access this, then uh, it's not gonna work. What we need to do is we need to pass in this guy here. This is like a client application. We just happen to name it OAuth client. And your client application will have this client ID and client secret. And it will first request a bearer token. Like your application will request a bearer token from this endpoint. And then if you're providing it the correct username and password, then this authorization server will give you the access token. It's just because your client application is not gonna have a database username and password. And if your client application is compromised for some reason, you can just go in here and you can delete this entirely. And then it just completely revokes the access to your client application. But what I'll do here, uh, and we're still doing everything in Cloud Shell, but you know, if you had an application, you wouldn't curl, you would put all this stuff into like a .env file. And then what happens is on the back end, the OAuth server is saying, okay, you passed in the, the right stuff and it gives you an access token. And this expires in 3600, I, I get this wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's 60 minutes. I'm pretty sure that's 3600 seconds. So we're gonna take this, we don't actually need the expires in portion. I'm going to copy it anyway and bring it over here. All right. So we're kind of like manually doing everything that an application automatically would. And now the lab is saying, okay, we're going to apply that access token to one of these endpoints, basically to the endpoint that we just tried. And we got that unauthorized response, this guy here. So we're going to take the curl command, make a curl command rather. And then we'll add in like, um, I keep doing A's. I'll just do like a B3 and then I'll make that null. And we're gonna copy this and then bring this over here. And again, like I said, we can remove this. We're not passing an output, we're just passing this input to our BizLogic endpoint. Remember, the BizLogic endpoint has that PLSQL procedure, the return PLSQL procedure. So you kind of see how everything kind of builds on top of each other. And then this access token, we're actually gonna pass that as a header. And in the lab, I'll show you how to do that. So. There are a couple different types of flags that you can use. I tried this one and this one is like the most explicit. I like this one for curl. You can put this after your post. So if we do dash dash OAuth two dash bearer, and then we can take this. I guess I could have copied the quotes also. And that's what it should look like. So make sure yours looks like that. And the output portion again is optional. And then we should be able to copy this entire thing and go back to our cloud console. And then you see here, we've got output 8168. So that worked because I first requested the bearer token 
right? Or my application first requested a bearer token saying, hey, this is my ID and here's my secret, uh, basically my credentials. Uh, can you give me an access token? And the server says, you are who you say you are. Here is an access token for accessing all the resources that are protected by the privilege that we added to this guy here. Privileges. And it expires in an hour. Let's see. What does our lab say? Basically the same thing that we just said right here. So your number may be different. Um, and that's it. The lab seven, I'm not going to go through that. It basically just shows you how to terminate this autonomous database, clean it all up, nuke it if you, if you want. But you may want to keep it as is, you know. Or you may want to say, uh, see, for instance, here I'm logged in as the admin. You may want to go to database users under administration and you may want to create a new user, like a test user, and you may want to run through this lab again and do some more practice. I'm done. I think we've, I think we've pretty much exhausted everything we can here, but uh, I hope this was uh, informative and entertaining, and I will see you all on the next one. Thanks.